Every year, more and more people get into climbing. And I remember when I was new, I was always trying to figure out what would help me improve the most. This video is aimed to provide beginner climbers with the advice that I wish I had heard when I first started. I'll be discussing my four favorite drills for climbing, which can all be implemented easily in your warm-up so you can still spend time on your project. From personal experience, once I started implementing these drills, I felt like I had begun to have a lot more confidence and mastery in my footwork and movement. The first two promote a leg-first approach to climbing, which a lot of beginners tend to lack, while the last two help you learn technique as fast as possible. Most climbing drills will be contextual, so if you have specific weaknesses, then they'll be helpful for addressing them. However, the first two drills are about open versus closed hip climbing. Hip positions that are so fundamental that it's rare you won't be in one of these two. As someone new to climbing, becoming aware of these two body positions will be an important first step in your climbing progression. It's very common to see beginner and intermediate climbers show obvious deficiencies from biasing towards one of the two. Alright, so the first drill is called Platform Builder. This one will work your open hip body positioning, which is where your hips face the wall and your legs open up like a frog, so that way your knees point outward. This position is incredibly common in climbing, and it is both technical and strength demands as you progress through the grades. The goal behind Platform Builder is to learn the optimal center of gravity for open hip positions. This way, whenever you're in these positions, you'll be able to know what it should feel like when executing open hip movements. To do this drill, you want to start on a climb that feels easy for you. Before moving your hand, make sure you set up a solid base of support. Base of support means being in a body position that puts as much weight on your legs as possible. In this case, the specific position we want is the perch. It's where you have a high foot and then you lean so your hips are over your legs. This makes it so that way your center of gravity is over your leg, almost as if you are sitting on your heel. In harder climbs, you probably won't find opportunities to perch, but I've found that the mere intention of getting into a perch will be the right mental cue for how I can exert enough force through my legs so that way I can do hard moves. Tips for feeling this position well. When perched, try to flex your butt and hamstring. This will develop good proprioceptive habits that will encourage better body tension by promoting a mind-muscle connection with your posterior chain. Maintaining tension in your posterior chain is a big part of keeping body tension as you try harder climbs. And most beginners don't need to make them stronger, since your legs can already support your weight. Rather, they need to develop the awareness of these muscles so they can learn how to recruit them. One progression you can make for this drill is to attempt to do every move off of a single leg. If you want more of a challenge, you can reduce the amount that you're locking off with your arms in order to put more of the load on your legs. The second drill is to backstep with a corkscrew. A backstep is when you step on the outer edge of your shoe. The corkscrew is a dynamic movement that has many variations, but in this drill we will start with the simplest, which is extending the leg off of a backstep. In order to do this drill, you want to find an easy climb, preferably with feet close to the center of your body rather than the outside. You will place the back step on the foothold and then try to extend your leg really hard as you reach up to the next hold. Repeat this process for every hold on the climb. This movement pattern is very common and in harder climbs it will have a lot of applications for executing reachier moves. There are also plenty of progressions you can do for this drill. You can start with just back stepping to get used to the closed hip body positions. And then as you get more comfortable, you can attempt this corkscrew movement, but supplement it with the arms. As you get used to the corkscrew movement, you can reduce the amount your arms help. Keep them straight as that will make you use more of your legs in the movement. The last two drills are aimed at helping you discover new climbing movements and body positions. The third drill is called straight arm bendy body, and this is a drill taken from the John Kettle book, so shout out there. Straight arms is a tip that most people are taught when they start climbing, but most climbers don't take the tip to its fullest extent. Climbing with straight arms for every move, especially as you go up the grades, will require a lot of creative thinking. This drill is all about exploring how twisting your body can make your movement more efficient as a means to help you explore new movement patterns. To do this drill, for every movement, keep your stationary arm as straight as possible as you move to the next hold. 
To do the movements, try twisting your hips, knees, or shoulders to reach the hold. A great progression for this once you've mastered the first stage is to do it with two feet on. This will force you to learn how to apply these concepts in all sorts of odd positions. This one is very counterintuitive as well, but I'd say that it is unrivaled in teaching climbers how to twist their body. I know when I started doing this drill, it felt like it broke a lot of my preconceived notions about the sport. I stopped thinking that I needed to lock off harder since it gave me new tools for my technique toolkit. Similarly, this is a drill that will scale really well as you continue to push harder grades. Obviously not all climbs lend themselves to doing this drill, since they might have too few feet, but attempting to do this drill on harder and harder climbs as you progress through grades will always be an option to test your problem solving. The fourth drill is to heel hook every move on a climb. To do this drill, find a climb that's easy for you. If you're new to heel hooking, then preferably something with a lot of jugs so you can learn how to place them well. Before every hand move, place a heel hook and see how you can use that heel hook to help with your next hand movement. For newer climbers, it'll start by teaching the fundamental movement pattern of the heel hook. And for more advanced climbers, it'll force you to heel hook something that doesn't have the best leverage. Which is great practice for hard heel hooking. Sometimes hard climbing cruxes are based on having moves that feel slightly off from the ideal body position, and it's your job to learn how to use them anyways. Heel hooking in positions that weren't meant to be heel hooked by the route setters is a great way to practice this sort of thing in the gym. However, I feel like this concept of enforcing a specific thing on every movement is great even outside of heel hooks. I've recently done this for toe hooks as well, and there are other variations of this type of thinking that shows up in other drills, like always having to tap the wall with your hip or having to do a back flag for every move. However, I'm emphasizing the heel hook one first because I think that being able to do heel hooks of all difficulties has a lot of benefits. Climbing is a very leg driven sport and body tension is all about training your posterior chain, the muscles along the back of your leg and butt. And heel hooking things that are hard for you will be a great way to train both your mind muscle connection with your hamstring while developing functional climbing experience. All right, so that's my pick for my favorite climbing drills for beginners. There are a lot of climbing drills out there, but I wanted to emphasize the ones that I've been doing the longest. The first two are great for teaching beginners how to execute and understand the two fundamental hip positions, while the last two are great for putting you in positions that'll help you learn new climbing movement patterns. If you liked the video, then I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. I've collected a lot of thoughts on climbing progression over the years, and I'm really excited to get them all out there through this channel.